Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make this half birthday cake or half cake, whatever you're using it for. I've noticed that they've become a little bit trendy lately and I'm actually seeing more and more people order these. This cake is filled and creme coated with a Nutella buttercream. You can pretty much use whatever you would like to, an American buttercream or even a ganache will work for this as well. You crumb coat this cake pretty much the exact same way you would a regular sized cake. However, you do need to put supports in it. So you'll notice I do have three bubble tea straws that are kind of poking out there as well. The reason that you need to do this is because it won't be stable enough on its own without those supports. If your particular cake is leveled perfectly to the point where you don't need any, then by all means don't add them in. But I think that little extra reassurance is a good idea. Now, interestingly enough, I do think it's a little bit more tricky to cover this particular cake because it's not round on all sides like a whole cake. Having that straight edge on the side can just make it a little bit trickier when you're actually trying to smooth the fondant onto the side of the cake. Now, I decided to style this in a very, very different way than I normally make my cakes. I want it to look really kind of whimsical and zany and cartoonish. So I am adding a lot of textures in and we are going to be using a lot of airbrushing as well. I'm indenting these lines here so I know where to put the different layers of icing of my cake and where to put my airbrushing as well. I really like this bench scraper because it also has some measurements on the side too. Now I'm using my airbrush and I'm using the color gold, not a gold sheen, just the gold color in a Miramist. And I am just airbrushing directly on those lines. And notice I'm letting that overspray happen because I want the rest of the cake to be that color on the inside. After every addition, I pretty much steam my cake. This is to ensure that I'm really saturating all the color, getting rid of that excess cornstarch. I also use it to clean off my board. And if I want to attach fondant to fondant, this is the easiest way to do it instead of having to sit there with my paintbrush and paint things on. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole tutorial. It's really not that tricky. It's just a little bit difficult, especially if you don't have a really sharp X-Acto knife. This portion is going to act as the drip on the cake. And what's tricky about this is you kind of have to eyeball things so you know it's going to wrap around the cake properly. I do make sure to have one side that's completely straight because that's going to go against the cut side of the cake. And again, because we have steamed that cake, it makes it really, really easy for this to adhere to the fondant that's already there. Now you do wanna make sure that at this part, you cut down anything that you don't want on the drip portion. And you do wanna make sure that you don't press anything in too, too much before you are satisfied with the exact placement. Now I'm going to go ahead and add on the little frosting that's going to be seeping out the front there. And I'm just taking some pieces of fondant, texturizing it, and then placing it on and squishing it on there. I find if you try to adhere these types of things with just using water instead of the steaming technique, it sometimes will fall off really easily. The steam really helps to adhere everything. Now I'm going to create dollops on the top of the cake. And all I'm doing is I'm kind of creating a rope that's a little bit larger on one end. This is so that our base is really nice and thick and then it'll go smaller and smaller as we reach the top of the swirl. Some tips when you're working with fondant, by the way, if you're finding that things are drying out really easily and you're getting a lot of elephant skin or cracking, just add a little bit of Crisco or shortening to it. That way it's going to be nice and pliable. If you're finding things are too sticky and things are sticking everywhere, just add a little bit of cornstarch, but don't do too much because that can also cause cracking. I was going to make strawberries to put on this cake, but I think making cherries is a lot more simpler, so do whatever you see fit. So in order to make these cherries, I'm literally just making a sphere, and then I'm taking this little tool here and sticking a hole in the center, but not all the way through. I'm adding a little bit more airbrush to that frosting area, just making sure to define all of those spaces. Again, I don't mean for this cake to be realistic. I want it to be really zany and cartoony. So I'm going with a hot electric pink on those cherries. And I'm really going in with my airbrush here on the drip as well. Now, if you don't have an airbrush machine, you can do this with paints or with petal dusts. It will take you a little bit longer and you do have to be careful about any potential fallout that comes from those petal dusts. 
Now this is very unlike me, but I am going to be using tweezers to apply these sprinkles because I want those to end up in a very particular spot. Now these cherries are still semi-drying from that airbrushing, so I'm just using this tool to put those cherries on so I don't get any of my finger markings in there. And you do wanna make sure that you press those in and steam it all together so that nothing falls off. I'm going to be using this floral wire and they are quite long. The reason being is because I want it to go right straight through the cake, almost as a little bit of a support in there. Now this isn't to reinforce the structural integrity of the actual cake itself. It's just to make sure that those cherries don't move around during transportation. Then I'm going to go ahead and add in all of those little details and adding some more sprinkles on there too. You could totally leave this borderless, but I just want to make sure that this looks really, really nice and clean and fun. So I'm going to add this beaded border because I feel like it's the border that I own that looks most like piped buttercream. I used to be really against owning a lot of fondant molds, especially in the beginning of my caking journey, but I just love a good fondant mold. It really will save you a lot of time and it just adds that little special something to your cake. Once that airbrushing has dried a little bit, I'm going in now and adding some more detailed airbrushing. So before it was more just kind of the ends that were airbrushed. Now I'm going in with a really dark airbrushing hand. And when I am airbrushing, I should mention by the way that the trigger is never ever fully down. It's just kind of barely touching that trigger to maintain as much control as possible. Prior to seeing this pop up on Instagram and my Facebook pages, I didn't know that celebrating half birthdays was a thing. So I see this a lot for half birthdays. I've also seen it to celebrate a baby's six month and six month anniversaries. But I know that you must all be very curious about the pricing of this cake. And we are going to get to that in one moment. Now you might be surprised to see that this cake is actually going to cost you the exact same amount as a full cake that looks exactly like this. Reason being is because it's really not that much less materials and it's really the same exact amount of work. In fact, there's a little bit more because you do need to put the supports in here to make sure that everything is staying together nicely. It's important to keep in mind that this isn't like grocery store half cakes where they sell them for a lot cheaper or basically half the price. They just get to cut their cakes in half. We don't. We actually have to decorate both sides. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Speedy Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!